and they're wearing out. Why? I'll go to 14 later. Let's go to 15 now. Because 15 is where we got our verse, our real basic verse for tonight, that episcopo, that bishop, that we are actually overseers and caretakers of our brothers. So let's read it again, looking carefully or diligently, lest anybody fall short of the grace of God. And the phrase fall short there in the Greek is really in lest anybody fall behind. Now what would fall behind mean? Well, we're in a race metaphor, remember? We started in chapter 12, verse 1, in a race metaphor. And so as you look over, you are going to find that there's a lot of people falling behind from God's grace. They're literally dragging. This race is getting harder and harder and harder. And they're falling behind from the grace of God. And this text does not have anything to do with these people are sinning so much that they've fallen away from God's grace. Because how many of you realize that Galatians 5.4, the Apostle Paul says, He who seeks to be justified by the law has fallen from grace. Not he who sins has fallen from grace. Let one of the major church leaders fall, fail in sin and, your, and Time Magazine is going to have their picture on the cover and it's going to say, fall from grace. Why do we do that? Because we're convinced that people fall from grace when they fail. So when we read scriptures like Hebrews 12 and people are falling behind, we figure that they're out there sinning like crazy and we need to straighten their lives up. No, we're putting paths straight in front of them because these people have been falling away from being justified by grace and have convinced themselves that they can be justified by their performance. And this is why their Christianity is getting difficult. Because the more I go to work trying to fix myself, the harder it gets to see myself fixed. I don't really see any transformation in my life because I'm so tired. Believers are tired, man. They're tired because they're worn out trying to please God. They've just exhausted themselves on pleasing God. Fall short is literally fall behind. And here's what happens is we are starting to fall behind based upon our performance. And here's the end result of what always happens. Remember a moment ago I told you that church is not individual. Church is plural. Church is corporate. So, you, And I know it's popular, and I didn't mean to bust anybody's bubble when you go, I am the church. It's popular to say that. I understand our heart, but I want you to understand that you're not on an island. Okay, You're part of the body of Christ. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because Jesus confronted people who were isolationists. And frequently, when Jesus would encounter an isolationist, Jesus' entire ministry would shift. One of the most popular moments is Jesus gets off the boat with his disciples at the land of the Gadarenes, a place called Gadara. And he is met by a young man who is cutting himself and foaming at the mouth and screaming and yelling. And, and the Bible says he's been living among the tombs, which means that he doesn't live in his own house anymore. None of his friends will hang out with him. He's an outcast from his family. And he's actually a homeless guy that's been living in the local cemetery. And when he hears that Jesus is on the beach, he comes running out, showing out, doing what he always does. And Jesus... Everybody remember the story of the gathering demoniac? What does Jesus do? Well, Jesus casts out the devils that are elite, that are legion. There's so many demons in this young man. He casts legion out into the pigs. And the, the crowd who lose their... By the way, the Gadarenes, there were, a, there were Gentiles in Gadara who would sacrifice pigs to their God. And so when Jesus actually casts the devils into the pigs, he does more than just cast devils into pigs and deliver a young man. He actually overturns the religious apple cart of the people that were in that land. And so when they come to find Jesus, they see this young man sitting, the Bible says, sitting clothed in his right mind. So he's sitting at a Jesus meeting, and he's talking to Jesus, and he's loving this encounter that he's having with the Son of God. And the Bible says that the people who had owned the pigs come to Jesus and they cast him out. They don't want him. Jesus had came and cast out a devil, but they come to cast out Jesus. And so they ask him, get back on your boat, leave us alone. And as Jesus is going back to his boat, the young man from Gadara, the man who was a Gadarene demoniac, but is now just a young man who has been influenced and impacted by transformation, tugs at Jesus' cloak and says, I want to go with you and be one of your disciples. And Jesus shifts the way he does ministry right there in that moment. Because at every point, Jesus is always taking people on and making them disciples. But in that moment, Jesus says to the young man, No, I want you to go home and I want you to show yourself to your friends and to your family. I was praying about that for a long time and the Holy Spirit showed me one thing and then a couple of years later showed me another thing. And Early on, what the Holy Spirit showed me was I wanted that young man to go back to his family because... 
that young man had isolated himself from everyone that loved him. And I found him living amongst the tombs all by himself. And what he needed was now to go back to that support group of the people who knew him and who loved him. So Jesus, even at the expense of losing a potential disciple, sent that young man back to his family because it's not in the heart of the Father to create isolationism in the church. It's not in the heart of Jesus to create islands. And how many of you know God will never put you in ministry at the expense of your family? Now, I grew up watching ministers sacrifice their kids on the altar of ministry. I watched pastors sacrifice their marriage on the altar of being a good pastor. Good pastor. So what that was doing is they were creating an isolation from the people that knew them and loved them so that they could be a disciple of Christ. This is antichrist. This is not Christ. So whenever people begin to fall back, what happens is they start to embrace a spirit of isolationism. They actually begin to push themselves away from community. This is what happens when we cloak ourselves enough in works. We cloak ourselves enough in performance. We go, well, I don't need anybody else. So nobody else has been a help to me anyway. And so, so, so some very negative connotations can begin to happen. The other thing the Holy Spirit began to show me, I want to stay on that young man for a moment. And this was one that just happened this year as I was studying and preaching this. Is Jesus doesn't do anything else in Gadara. He doesn't heal one other person. He doesn't save one soul. He doesn't raise one person from the dead. He only heals the young man who was demon-possessed. And when the crowd comes to Jesus, stay with me here. I'm going to say this very carefully. When the crowd comes to Jesus, Jesus is powerless to change their lives. Powerless. So he leaves the young man to change their lives. Did you catch what Jesus couldn't do at Gadara? He left that young man to do in his place. What does that mean to me? You are so vitally important in your time and your location. You realize this? You are not accidentally where you are. You are for time and purpose where you are. Jesus could have put that young man on his boat and made him a disciple. And instead he said, no, you're going to stay here. I couldn't do anything with these people, but you can. So go move back home and tell everybody you see what I've done to you. Make an impact in the people around you. Make a touch, touch their lives. Make a transformation happen by being here. Listen, folks, what did Jesus do is he grabbed a young man whose arms were feeble, whose knees were paralyzed, who had fallen away, who had so consumed himself that he had actually fallen away from the pack and isolationism. And Jesus picked his hands back up, healed his knees, restored him, and sent him right back to the front of the pack to say, You're, you are here to make a difference in someone else's life. Jesus was not about building a ministry. Jesus was about building people. Because if Jesus was about building a ministry to put the kid on a boat, 